Postal 2 has an incredible range of weapons to blast through its many days. Its most excruciating difficulty alters the effectiveness of this arsenal and greatly changes what's worth carrying in your now limited weapon slots. So here, from worst to best, is a subjective ranking based on my playthrough from Monday to Friday. F tier. Sign, Baton, Shovel, Knuckle Dusters. Straight away, I'm lumping these together at the bottom of the barrel. There will never be a point during Ludicrous where you should use these. Other F tier weapons have some edge cases or something useful about them. These will get you killed. Scissors. Speaking of useless, the scissors rank about the same and only barely avoid last place by being a ranged weapon. The secondary fire bouncing off of walls is kind of cool, but the pitiful damage makes this not even worth picking up. Molotov. Fire in Ludicrous is more curse than blessing. The damage to NPCs is minimal, but it can drain your health rapidly. An engulfed enemy will stop attacking briefly to rush you, but once they're basically in melee range, they resume shooting. The Molotov, simply put, is a bottle of danger. Can of deodorant. The plumes of fire spewed forth by the deodorant makes it initially seem quite powerful, but this is a facade. Unaware enemies will ignore lingering flames on the ground and direct attacks do little damage. I keep expecting there to be a secondary fire where you throw the can and it explodes like a grenade. If that were the case, it may not be in F tier. Bally Song. The Butterfly Knife is another melee weapon with garbage damage, but with one key distinction. It can one-shot enemies when attacking from behind. A powerful effect, but its specificity makes it near worthless. C tier. Gasoline. Despite all of the drawbacks of fire, the gas can barely climbs into C tier because of its use as a defensive tool. Enemies are deterred by fire and will refuse to cross a line of it. And while that use is limited, it can come in handy in certain situations. Napalm Launcher. A direct hit with the Napalm Launcher, though costly, can one-shot a target. Both primary and secondary attacks will leave a trail of fire which has some defensive utility, similar to the gas can. The lengthy reload after each shot and the fact that you can't switch weapons until the animation is finished makes this almost deserving of being in F tier. Flipping the Bird. Piss. Dude can relieve himself at an impressive distance. An accurate splash can halt your opponents for a brief moment, but it's hard to hit your mark, making it fairly unreliable. Flipping the bird works in a similar fashion, but with a more forgiving radius. The stun is much shorter though, and it is ineffective against anyone already firing at you. Shotgun. The shotgun can take out any enemy with a single shot, but the range and precision needed to do this is quite merciless. It always seems slightly less powerful than you'd think. One side. Beta shotgun. Moderate damage, slightly outpacing the regular shotgun, and the double shot alt fire has decent stopping power. Its major drawback is the six shot reload, which can leave you quite vulnerable. Beat you. Diseased Cowhead, Crutchy Grenade. Only the Crutchy Grenade explodes, but both weapons cause a type of poison. The rarity of both kneecaps the power level greatly, only being found in a few select places across all of Paradise. Chainsaw. Despite its comparable killing power to edged weapons, it comes with a few significant drawbacks. Its dismemberment output could outpace even the scythe, but it's far from stealthy and revving up the engine alerts all nearby. Though it's quite generous, its shared ammo pool with the gas means it can run dry and become unusable. Shears, Axe, Baseball Bat. Edged weapons and their ability to dismember NPCs make them devastatingly effective, but not all are created equal. The Axe, Shears, and Baseball Bat are all hindered by enemies with two-handed weapons being able to block your incoming attacks. Wow, these things never get dull. Piss 2. Towards the end of the week, pissing gets a big upgrade. It immediately causes a long stun to anyone caught in the wet zone and only does minimal damage to you while using it. During my playthrough, this was severely underutilized. Regardless, it loses points for only being available on Friday. Shocker. Considering its speed, ability to incapacitate, and recharging ammo, the only area the shocker falters is range. It's a bit of an underdog weapon and is the peak of B tier. A tier. Sledgehammer, a solid workhorse of a weapon. High damage, one-shotting enemies even with the blood turned off, stealthy and throwable. Every problem is just a nail that hasn't been hit hard enough yet. Machete, great for carving your enemies and playing fetch with dogs. Heads up. Unfortunately, the machete and sledgehammer both lose points for being vulnerable to being blocked. 
grenade launcher. Not a one-hit wonder, but it still boasts an impressive rate of fire and decent splash damage. Its secondary fire with bouncing projectiles helps when fighting around corners and in tight spaces. Submachine gun, machine gun, and machine pistol. Three sides of the same three-sided coin with a slight variance to their range, accuracy, and damage. Solid weapons with solid DPS and enough ammo lying around that they won't go hungry. Grenade. While the launcher has a faster output than its thrown counterpart, grenades have so much utility in the defensive field. Working like landmines, you can use them as traps and really make a mess of things if you can preempt your enemies. Dynamite. Dynamite offers a fantastic spike of damage over a wide area, synergizing well with grenades and plentiful enough to raise your power level considerably. Pistol. The pistol is the best long range option outside of the sniper rifle. Accurate, high damage, and the ammo is abundant throughout the entire week. Rocket launcher. Heat seeking rockets fired around corners to deal with enemies without needing a line of sight is fucking sick. The normal rockets are nothing to scoff at either, only needing five fuel to instantly shoot a projectile worth over 150 damage. The Nuke Launcher and the WMD. By far the highest damage and most destructive weapons on this list. They fall short of the number one spot by its lack of accessibility and small ammo pool. If you manage to collect either from the end of Tora Bora, ludicrous difficulty will see ammo for it drop quite frequently. Sniper Rifle. Phenomenal range and great accuracy. Incredibly high damage that pierces enemies and destroys in layers. Sword Off Shotgun. The Sword Off is an offensive champion. Huge blasty damage over a great spread. Death with two barrels. A magic wand with a single spell. Full body evisceration. Scythe. Some might think it heresy to put anything but the Sword Off in the absolute top of the top tier. But the Scythe really can't be beat. It's silent, has great range for melee, the arc is fucking huge, cleaving multiple targets, and it shreds every other edged weapon with the ability to bypass blocking. What more needs to be said? The Scythe is today's champion. And there it is. A quick overview of the best and worst weapons the game has to offer. Now let me know why you disagree with these rankings. Simply comment broadsword if you think the game could use more swords. I think it could use more swords. And a huge thank you to all of the members supporting this channel. Fuck, I'm not going in there! Oh my god, bro.